Hey guys, so as many of you I'm sure know, so you'd certainly know if you've been subscribed to this channel for any length of time, that I commit something of a cardinal sin as a Linux user and I dual boot. Now, uh, I pretty much only dual boot for games. Um, I like playing games um, and unfortunately a lot of my favourite titles are available only on Windows and it doesn't look like they're going to be ported to Linux anytime soon. I like, you know, I'm a big fan of the Elder Scrolls franchise and it's nice to see Morrowind getting um, an open source port for Linux, albeit unofficially, but we're not going to see Oblivion or Skyrim really make it to Linux anytime soon unless Valve do something incredibly amazing, which, well, maybe, you know, maybe they might. But um, I'm also a big fan of the Mass Effect franchise, love Deus Ex, um, and I love the Hitman franchise, and all of these are Windows-only uh, games, and it's really, I, you know, it's, it's, it's annoying, really. I'd be happy uh, with the entire Linux gaming roster if it, if, if it wasn't for those games. So that's pretty much the sole reasons why I dual boot. So, um, I usually dual boot, or I have been dual booting, Windows 8.1 with my uh, Linux distribution of choice, which I've, I've switched around to a few times even in the past year, it's, usually, it's been a Debian-based one or the other, but like I say, I've been trying out various different desktop environments um, in the sort of mini-series, I guess, that I'm doing, where I talk about my experiences with each one. And uh, I have found that there is a distinct difference in uh, sort of user experience between using a desktop environment that's sort of pre-installed with a, an operating system and one which you install on top of. So uh, I'm sort of bearing that in mind when I do my tests. That being said, um, yeah, for, for the last six months, I guess, I've been dual booting Linux with Windows 8.1. And just like almost every person I know who runs 8.1, I, I hate it. It's terrible. It's, it's unfathomably terrible in all the ways. Um, I know that I focus a lot on, on user interface because that's just sort of, I don't know, the area that I enjoy discussing the most. It's an area that I find quite fascinating because it's where really technical stuff meets sort of everyday use and I like the, the connect between those two and how complex that connect can be. Man, you really wouldn't expect a company with as much money as Microsoft to mess it up as badly as all that. But it wasn't really them messing up per se, it was them trying to force uh, a, a user interface on us, and that's the danger of monopolies, is that Microsoft think that they have that much power that they can actually force people to use their systems in ways which they wouldn't otherwise want to do. And of course, if you buy something, it, you're the consumer, you should be the one that gets to call the shots. Uh, but, uh, you know, and of course that's one of the reasons why I like Linux, is the customizability. The fact that you're fully in control of your own system, or at least have a significant greater control than Microsoft. But that's not why I'm making this video today. I could, I could bitch and moan about Microsoft till the sun goes down, and I, I suppose given that time of the year, you could probably even take that literally. But, it's uh, the technical aspect, and it's the technical aspect of dual booting in particular. I wouldn't recommend dual booting with Windows 8.1 and I think it's pretty safe to assume that you also can apply what I'm about to say to Windows 8 as well. Um, because of how it manages the hard drive it uses uh, a number of new technologies for trying to speed up um, boot ups and shutdown times and uh, how files are accessed and uh, accessed and managed and um, it's made the system very difficult to work with in a dual boot scenario. The most obvious example of this um, that I've experienced is the um, fast boot um, thing that they've brought in. I'll link to an article which explains it a little better than I can down in the description below. The idea is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 um, are designed to boot up faster and shut down faster. Of course, that kind of comes with a caveat. There's, of course, no such thing as a free lunch. And that caveat is that um, snapshots are saved of various of, of, of boot-up scenarios and that um, they are saved and restored on um, startup and shutdown, resulting in when shutting down Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, not actually shutting down your computer fully, but being in a, uh, a state that's sort of half hibernation, half shutdown. There's a number of reasons why I don't like this. Uh, and actually, I discovered it, right? I discovered it. It wasn't, it wasn't brought to me as some sort of feature update or anything like that. It wasn't, it wasn't told to me. I found out about this 
because I was curious as to why my custom build computer um, after installing Windows 8.1 I pressed any key on the keyboard and it started up again after started up from shutdown that concerned me because I didn't think my computer was shutting down properly if you can start up your computer by pressing spacebar on a custom build, this wasn't something I bought from the shop. This was, you know, I know that this is not how my computer starts up. And you, you know, you press the spacebar, you press the escape key, and it boots up from shutdown. That that's that's a concern, man. That's a real concern because that's not a shutdown computer, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I did notice that this didn't occur if I cut the power, as in cut the power from the power source, because um, of course I've got one of those uh, power boxes where you've got the switch just around the back where you can actually completely cut the power. I turned that off and turned that back on, and lo and behold, it didn't take a space, you know, I couldn't start the computer up with the key, I had to actually push in the power button, as you're supposed to do. And it's, you know, like, I, I, I appreciate the attempt at convenience, but seriously, how hard is it to push a power button once during a session? You know, it's stupid, as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I haven't measured or checked to see how much power uh, it uses. I'm going to assume that it's negligible. I'm going to assume that is a... That is, that is an assumption, and I think it's a fair assumption, but um, there's a few reasons why I don't like that, just right off the bat, and it's probably the same reasons that you're thinking right now. That's control of your own computer taken out of your hands in, 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 a, in a very tangible and very real way. And if you were happen to be wearing a tinfoil hat right about now, you might also suspect that um, that kind of way that a computer allegedly shuts down might also allow for certain uh, microphones or webcams or whatever to actually be accessed um, possibly remotely uh, whilst you actually you know believe that your computer is switched off when in fact it's not it's on and quite possibly using hardware I don't know like I say that's a tinfoil hat moment but it certainly feels like that it certainly feels like you're not in control of your computer it feels like you're going down that road it feels like it's a and I hate using the term slippery slope because it is to a degree a logical fallacy, but I don't think it is here. We are losing control over our, our you know, over the Windows operating system day on day on day on day to the point where we don't even know is, if it's switched off or not. And that, I don't like. I do not like that on a philosophical level, on a just straightforward philosophical level. Why the, what, why can't I turn off my computer? Now, of course, there are ways that you can um, turn this feature off. And of course, I'll put a link to an article which, expl which explains how you can do that uh, below because I feel that um, the, the only benefit you really get out of it, from my understanding, is a slightly increased uh, startup and shutdown time. But I don't, I personally don't notice it. Like, I don't know if it's because, and I don't have a solid state hard drive, um, which uh, massively increases your boot up time. I have a just pretty pretty run the mill SATA hard drive, and I don't have a problem with it. Like I don't have a problem waiting for a, a minute. I remember uh, 10, 15 years ago, and um, me and my dad would like discussing that boot up times were increasing. Like you know, in the good old days, you turned on a computer, three seconds, phew, you're up and running. And we timed a computer, and it took about one minute, 20 seconds to boot up. It wasn't the fastest computer on the, you know by any stretch. It was pretty mediocre, probably even a bit slower than mediocre. And we were pretty we we're pretty like Wow, one minute twenty, that's a long time to wait for a computer to boot up. Because, you know, of course it was going down that slope at this point. One minute twenty, I'm fine with waiting, you know, for that now. I usually will turn my computer on, go and make a cup of tea or coffee or whatever, and then come back. You know, jobs are good. And, like, it's not, that's not, that's not one minute twenty seconds that have been removed from your life. You know, you don't have to just sit there at your computer waiting for it to turn up, twiddling your thumbs. Um, and even if you do, sometimes doing nothing is, is, is perfectly healthy and helpful. Um, I think, you know, sometimes we can live in a society where we always feel that we have to be entertained or amused at every possible turn and that every silence is for some reason an awkward silence or whatever. Nah, nah, nah. But anyway, so yeah, I, you know, my, my Windows 8.1 uh, install, uh, I, it, I, I didn't, like, it wasn't, it didn't change that much that I noticed it. It might have gone from, say, uh, the boot up might have gone from, like, I don't know, 40 seconds to a minute or something, you know, a minute to minute 120 or, you know, vice, you know, so... Yeah, it didn't, like, I didn't, it didn't, I, I'd rather have the full proper control. And the fact that this weird sort of save state, fast boot, you know, more than hibernation but not quite shut down, being treated as a shut down type of scenario is put on as default I don't like. And I don't like that I wasn't informed about it. I, I don't like that I had to Google it to find out that this thing even happened. Um, and another problem that I also had in regards to the dual boot, because this, this video is actually supposed to be about dual booting, uh, not me just bitching on about Windows. Um, the reason, uh, one of the problems I came up with it was that um, 
I tried to access my Windows partition to get some uh, gameplay recording videos off of it. So I record, if I do like gameplay uh, videos in Windows, uh, of course, link to the gameplay channel down in the description as well. Quick, shameless plug there. Um, but if I do some video game recording um, on my Windows partition, I'll save it on the Windows partition because it's just easier than mixing projects across multiple partitions. And then I will um, take those files and then edit them and then upload them on my Linux partition. Because I switch in to do gaming and I switch pretty much straight out straight away, especially on Windows 8. Terrible, terrible. Like, like multiple people thought that Windows 8 was a good idea. Like, it wasn't just some guy in a basement thinking, oh, I'm going to use the whole screen with colourful squares. No, no, there was like, there was a team of people, multiple teams of people that thought Windows 8 was, was just a good idea. And, and this technology, like, I remember it's the same deal when Windows XP came in, and there were just loads of bugs, and, and NTFS was was rubbish, um, and it took a while to to get back on its feet. But now we're just jumping straight onto Windows 10, um, which of course, not using you know we're not having a Windows 9 because for some reason the file names collide with you know Windows 95 and Windows 98 distributions, which is dumb. Um, but then again, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, I say dumb like I'm looking down on them. Fuck it, they're better programmers than I am. Don't, even, you know, don't get me wrong. But, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, we're jumping over to Windows 10 um, before Windows 8's even had a chance to sort of get comfortable. And I think that's silly as well. I mean, I, I understand that they give you a free upgrade or whatever. But Windows XP lasted forever. Like, I mean, you could still use Windows XP today. Um, the only problem with it, of course, is they drop support for it. But it's, it's still a perfectly fine distribution. I know businesses um, that are actually still using XP with no real problems. But of course, you know, Microsoft, they always got a, they got a, they got a, you know, money. What it is, and it's a business. And that's, you know, maybe something as fundamental as an operating system you know, might, might be perhaps better run as a community project. Or at least, like, with a, you know, in conjunction with a community project in a, in a corporation. Maybe, 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 or maybe I'm just a hippie without a clue, who knows. But anyway, um, yeah, so, um, the problem is, is that when you shut down using that fast uh, boot nonsense, um, it's real problematic, nigh impossible to, um, to actually access your Windows partition via your Linux partition. And, and that, that's crummy. That's crummy, you know. Like you, you have to, you have to turn it off effectively at that point if you want to have any interaction between the two partitions. Um, but that wasn't that wasn't the thing that made me switch. I happily carried on with about two or three months um, with with that with that in mind and knowing that. Um, but it was the I think it was that I upgraded um, or I switched a Linux distribution, and that Linux distribution. Rewrit or rewrote rather the bootloader on my first partition, which is also my Windows partition. It's always advisable to put your Windows partition on your first hard drive uh, because Windows not Windows doesn't expect to be dual booted. Linux is more prepared for it, so you put Windows uh, Linux on the um, second hard disk because you know that it can it can deal with that kind of environment. Windows might just have a hissy fit and you know wander off or whatever. Um, go on strike or whatever. So yeah, um, so you put you so so, but it, yeah, and, and it was just the, the way that the, the file management um, didn't agree with Grub being installed, and the problem with that then was that it locked me out of Windows 8.1. It locked me out of the entire hard drive. I couldn't even take any files from like you know I could, I could boot into my Linux partition, and then from my Linux partition I couldn't act I couldn't access the, the 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 hard disk drive. Not even you know I I not even with all the pseudoing in the world I couldn't access that Windows hard drive. It just it w wasn't having it. It was acting like it was broken, and it might as well have been. And it completely locked me out of my operating system. My Windows 8.1 operating system, and uh, thank God I didn't lose any. I didn't lose one thing, and this is why we back up, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we back up. Um, but um, I could have, you know, I could have. Uh, I do a lot of video work, of course, and video work is is difficult to back up all the time. I only back up projects which are like for other people, really. Um, you know, I can always I can deal with losing my own work because I can just re-record. I can redo stuff. Um, but that being said, I um, yeah, I was locked out of my own operating system. Grub basically, um, I, I, I switched distributions on my Linux partition. Windows was shut down in 
it was shut down and then when it rebooted it wanted to install updates. I think that was the situation. A problem I've never had with Windows 7, I'd like to point out, or any previous version of Windows. But it, 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 it went into that hibernation state, even though I switched off Quick Boot, it went into that hibernation state because it wanted to reboot and do something with updates. Uh, and, and, um, I, in, and, and during that moment, I, I, I shut off my Windows uh, 8 partition uh, when, in its mind, it wanted to reboot and do updates. I rebooted then into the Linux partition, uh, or in, into a flash drive, then in, reinstalled my Linux partition, which reinstalled the grub on um, partition 1, which then in turn locked me out of my operating system. And it's it's I, that's a bit of a weird situation, but the reason why that made me downgrade back to Windows 7 for gaming was because I know that wasn't going to be the last time that happened. I knew that there were going to be these file management problems with Windows 8 continually. You know, the first two, the, you know, the first one, okay, I can navigate it around, it might have been a one-off. The second one was like, well, that was outside of my control anyway. You know, I... I so I, don't, I, I, I really wouldn't have known how to avoid that unless every time I shut down Windows 8 I make sure that it doesn't need to do upgrades or that I do upgrades. Who wants to faff around with that? So my plan is, well I've already downgraded to Windows 7, Windows 7 works fine just like it used to um, and then by the, and I'm going to keep that Windows partition until Windows 7 is no longer supported. I might even keep it post support because you can still play games just I, I, I wouldn't just I, I wouldn't connect to the internet um, because obviously there would be certain security hazards or I might only connect to connect to Steam or something I wouldn't surf the internet on uh, on a browser or anything and then I you know maybe AVG might uh, I know that AVG have continued support for XP for those people that don't want to upgrade but yeah and um, and I and I'm, ain't going to touch Windows 8 for it with a barge pole. And I'm going to assume that the technology behind that file management, that fast booting or whatever, um, is going to carry on to Windows 10. I think the biggest change from Windows 10 from Windows 8 is just going to be user interface. Um, really, that's 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 my sort of guess. All this other fluff that they're, they're talking about would just have come along with Windows 8 had Windows 8 just not been the monumental failure that it was because a lot of Windows users don't care what's under the hood of their operating system and a lot of them don't even care that they're losing control over their operating system as much as they are. I know I'm horrendously generalizing here as well but that's that's the internet in it, we have to sensationalize everything. Um, but I think losing that much control over my operating system has uh, was effectively the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, but as usual, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this one because, again, complex issue. Anyway, I've rattled on for long enough. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments, of course, down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.